Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mamas out there. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, you give them a round of applause, absolutely. <laughs> welcome to Crossville Baptist Church, and uh, I know there's probably some new visitors here, so welcome to you. Thank you for joining us today at Crossville. Uh, just a couple of announcements that I do have for you, uh, starting with just the summer schedule, because now we're starting to get into that um, summer schedule. We will not have Sunday night services starting tonight because of Mother's Day, uh, but we will not have Sunday night services until August. So um, um, be, you, we want you to just take the Sunday nights off and just be with your family, especially today. Just spend time with your family, spend time with your mamas. Uh, next week is graduate recognition. If you haven't already, please send me those letters that I've, I've sent out. As you should have got a letter from me. Um, please send those back. Just all of your acclimates that you have, just to brag on yourself so I can brag on you next week. Next week is a very busy week um, with everything going on. So we do have graduate recognition next week. Uh, graduates, wear your, wear your cap and ground. We would love to recognize you next week. But also next week is kids' salt deposits are due. Um, and I want to go ahead and say this because I've had some people asking. Um, do not let money be an option. Uh, if money is a reason why you cannot, cannot go, it's okay. Um, we are a loving and caring, supporting church. Um, just we want you to sign up and we want you to go. So kids, if you are, would like to go, if it's... Uh, I forgot, ages, grades three, uh, so third grade through fifth grade. We would love to have you go to Kids Salt. Kids Salt is just like summer salt for our youth, but it's geared more towards their children, and it's going to be a fantastic time. And the actual dates for that, if you can see, is July 8th through the 11th. But next week is when the $50 deposits are due for you to go. So please get with Allison and get with Lauren on, on about going. Also next week, right after our morning worship service, um, I'm going to have a somersault parents meeting. So all of my parents of the youth that are going to somersault, we will have a very brief um, meeting next week right after our morning worship. It will be very brief. Uh, be looking for me to give you some paperwork for you to fill out uh, either before Sunday school or before the worship service so the meeting can go a lot quicker. Um, I think that is all that we have for today. So thank you again for being here. Thank you, moms for all of the love that you show us. Uh, would you pray with me as we begin today's service? God, thank you so much for today that we can recognize and honor a very gift that you gave us, our moms. God, for, may you be with the ones who maybe their moms has already passed on. May you just be with us as we're just remembering them. But God, thank you, Lord, for the ones who are still here. And God, thank you, Lord, for how they have shaped us and helped to shape us and who the, the people that we are. So God, thank you, Lord, for the, we know about your unconditional love because of the love of a mom. So God, thank you, Lord, for that gift. And may you be with us now in this hour as we just come and just give you all the praise and the glory uh, during this worship service. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm 
hey guys, so Miss Allison is not here. Her grandmother's not doing well, so you get me today. Uh, but what is so special about today? It's Mother's Day. Hopefully you've given your mother a hug. If not, I'm going to give you that opportunity in just a minute. Yeah, come on up. Um, so putting you on the spot, who can tell me what their favorite thing is about their mom? Go ahead. She's kind. Good. You have one? It's okay. I'm putting you on the spot. It's hard to think on the spot. Chloe, what's yours? The way she loves me. Would y'all all agree with that? Your mama loves you really, really good? Mamas are special. They love differently than dads do, don't they? They do. They have more... I'm a dad, and I can say this. Moms have more love than the dads do sometimes. But um, here's one thing that my mom, um, and I want y'all to look at this. So one thing that my mom, as I was growing up, that I always loved was her purse. So my mom had this special purse. Do y'all know who Mary Poppins is? She had a Mary Poppins kind of purse, right? So and watch. I bet if you turn around, how many of you have a good-sized purse with you today? Like you have a lot in your purse. Look at there. Look at there. They're all, they're a mom. I'm seeing hands up over there. There are so something things about moms is what they'd have. Like if you want, like back in my day, you had a quarter. You're like, mom, can I have a quarter? She'll go into a purse and get a quarter so I can put it in a machine. And do they even have these machines anymore where you turn and you get little bubble gum things? <laughs> right? So, or if you need a chapstick, um, or sometimes you needed a Band-Aid, they can reach in there. So, uh, my mom sometimes would have candy in there. Um, and sometimes you can even ask her and say, Mom, you got a screwdriver? And sure enough, she reached in that purse and she pulled out a screwdriver, right? So moms just are gifted. They're always there to meet every single need is what I'm trying to say. In this magical purse, they have something in there that can meet your need. And moms are special. Well, the Bible has a lot to say about moms too. So what I want to do is show you some passage of scripture from uh, Proverbs 31. It says, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without the fear of the future. She can, she can just not worry about tomorrow because she's just that strong, and, she, and that personality is there. And then it says, when she speaks, her words are wise. Y'all's moms have a lot of wise words. Uh, and she gives instructions with kindness. She's constantly um, telling you how to do things with very kind and gentle. And then it says she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Have you noticed that moms, they're always busy? Because they're, they're not lacking in laziness. Or, yeah, they're not lazy at all. And then it says her children stand and bless her. And her husband praises her. But here's the best part of the whole passage. It says there are many virtuous and capable women in the world. But you, moms, moms, surpass them all. So let's thank God for our moms because they surpass them all. They're always there for us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you have gifted, gifted us with moms tailored each mom to our very special needs as children. Each mom knows how to love us, knows how to reach just to us, and that is what you gifted us with. So thank you, Lord, for our moms that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before you leave, here's what I want you to do. On your way back, I want you to give your mom a great big hug, okay? Give your mom a great big hug. Um, and then, and that is your treat for today because I see that we don't have candy out. But that is going to be your treat today. <laughs> you go hug your mom and that will be your treat today. And if you're sitting by your mom, give them a hug real quick.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful, glorious day that you've given us to be in your house to worship the one true living God. We thank you for how you've blessed this church, how you've blessed each and every one of us. We thank you for the mothers here today, dear Lord. We thank you for godly mothers everywhere that try their best to raise their children and love them unconditionally and raise them according to your will, dear Lord. We pray now that you'd bless this service, that you'd bless this offering. For it's in your precious name we do pray. Amen.
Amen. Turn and greet those around you as our choir comes down this morning. And kids, Nathan found candy. So if you want candy, go see Nathan and tell him good morning. Uh, we're going to take a moment here to recognize our moms. Uh, there are a few special moms uh, that we want to recognize uh, first today, and then we'll recognize some others. Uh, I'd like to recognize first our moms that are 90 years old and older. Now, two of them are in the hospital. Miss Faye Berry's in the hospital, and Miss Betty Reichert is in the hospital. Then there are some that are not able to be with us today. Uh, Miss Esther Artis, Miss Juanita Rabin. Uh, I'm seeing, is, are there any here that are 90 years and older? Would you stand if you're 90 and older? Where? Barbara Artis. Barbara Artis is here. All right, yeah, come on. We thank you so much for coming and recognizing the 90 and plus. Uh, these are the ones in our church that are 90 years old and older. It's Betty Reichert, Esther Artis, Juanita Rabin, uh, B. Winters, Faye Berry, and Barbara Artis. And we congratulate her for being with us today. Some of the others wanted to be here, but they can't for health issues. So we're so glad she's here. Now we'd like to, like to recognize the mothers with the most children. I know we have two moms here that have six children. Is there anyone here that has more than six children? Okay. We have two that have six children, so we recognize Miss June Dunson this morning. And Miss June, with all your family staying, she's got a whole pew full with her this morning. How about that? Miss June is a wonderful example for everyone in the church of a wonderful, loving, caring mother and grandmother. And I think great-grandmother, too, isn't she? Is she great-grandmother yet? Yes, okay. So she's got a bunch of kids. Okay. <laughs> so we're glad for that. Then we have what actually one of our younger mothers is that actually has six kids, too. There aren't too many mothers this age that have six kids anymore. But Kara Kohler has six kids also, and she has a wonderful family. You stand with your family. You stand. <laughs> and we thank you so much. And Kara is also a great example of a very loving and caring and giving mother. Uh, by the way, both of those are military moms. You know, they, they were, their husbands in the military, uh, they served our faithful country alongside their husbands and took care of the children while the husbands did their job. So uh, we are so proud of both of those moms today. Uh, we would like to recognize all of our mothers today that are here with us. Uh, if you're a mother here with us today, would you stand so we can honor you today? We are so glad to have all of you with us today. At the end of the service, when you exit today, there will be a rose for you. Uh, Nathan will be passing out the roses at one door, and Lauren will be passing out the roses at this door and uh, that the other door. So please receive a rose on your way, way out as you exit today. I would like for us to take a moment and to pray for all of our moms. I know all of us have uh, very warm memories of our mothers and uh, some of you are so fortunate to still have your mothers with you. And what a blessing that is. As Nathan asked you earlier to hug your mom if she was next to you, I'd love to give my mother one more hug if I could. Uh, but I'll see her in heaven, so that's, that's okay. So uh, if you would, let's just stand for a moment in honor and in memory of our moms and have a prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to recognize our mothers. Lord, in your uh, wisdom, you created moms. Father, you gave them something extra. Something, Lord, that helps them to love continuously, to love in spite of, even as you love. You gave them extra energy to take care of. You gave them... Uh, extra wisdom to guide us, to direct us, to help us, Lord, in life. Thank you so much, Lord, for the creation of mothers. Lord, thank you for every mom who is here today. Lord, I recognize their job today is really hard, but I pray, Lord, for each mom here today 
that you will give them wisdom and understanding and strength and endurance to do the job that they need to do to raise their children in the Lord. And Father, for those of us that are here today that our moms are already in heaven with you, we thank you for the blessings that they were in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for how they touched us with your love. And Father, we just thank you again for this moment to say thank you for mothers. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. Some of you will remember, uh, if you're old enough, when the wars were happening back in the last century, uh, there were posters in a lot of the storefronts, and it had a man with a beard dressed in red, white, and blue, and on that poster it says, We want you. That was America calling men to service, wanting men to come and serve in battle in the Lord. Uh, today, I'm challenging our mothers here today. God wants you. He wants you to be the godly mother that he needs you to be. I recognize today that it is more difficult maybe than ever before in America to raise your child in the Lord. There are so many things in our nation, in our land, that are there to pull our kids away from God, to confuse our kids on what is the truth, to trip up our kids from being the godly person that God wants them to be. So moms, I recognize today that your job is harder probably than it's ever been in the history of our nation to raise your children as godly children. But that's what God wants us to do. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, this is from the English Standard Version. But if you go to New Living uh, Translation, which is a more modern translation, it's very similar. Direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. And I could not leave out New American Standard, which is closest to the translation of Greek. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he grows older, he will not abandon it. So parents, here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to offer four spiritual values to help you, guidelines to help you in raising your children in a godly way. Because I want us to understand what does it mean to train up a child in the way he should go. What does that mean for you as a parent? It means that parents, you have a crucial role of guiding your children toward the path of righteousness. Today we explore, we're going to explore the importance of that spiritual direction in your children's lives. They need it so desperately in the world today. Because let me tell you, if you're not offering them guidance, the world is, and the world is leading them down the wrong path. The first spiritual value I want to share with them today is that you need to teach them to love with God's love. Not what the world says that love is, but what true love is, and that true love comes from God. So for you to be able to do that, parent, you first must have God's love in you. You get God's love in you by knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. It says in, first, in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and one of our Awanas quoted this verse last week, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his world, Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is how you teach your children about God's love. For God so loved. He loved us so much that he made a way for us to be forgiven for our sins. You, parent, as a born-again child of God, you as a parent become the major channel of God's love to your children. God lets his love flow through you to your kids in an unconditional love that can only come from God. And believe me, they will feel it and they will experience it. You become the model of God's love to them. 
That is where they first see and begin to recognize God's love. It is, in th it is through you, the parents, that they see God's love. So I challenge you, parent, to love your children as God loves. The second value, spiritual value, I want to talk to you about today is to teach them to live by God's truths. Now, there are so, different, so many different standards of truth in our culture today. In fact, most people believe that truth is a fluid term, that it changes with time or it changes with circumstance. That's not what God teaches us. God's truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you need to teach your children God's truth. You must know His Word and able to teach His Word to them. And you must live by His Word if you're going to teach these truths to your children. It says in 2 Timothy 2.15, and these have been, this has been a guiding verse for my life. And I challenge you, parents, to let it be a guiding verse for your life as you raise your children. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Parents, I'm challenging you, if you're not already, to be a student of God's word. Study the Bible, know the Bible, teach the truths of the Bible to your children. They're not going to get it in school. They're not going to get it in other places except you and the church. And by the way, speaking of the church, I challenge you to let the church be involved in your children's lives to teach them God's truths. We teach God's truths here through Sunday school, through Awana, through even our choir program for the children, through Vacation Bible School, through worship, through so many different ways. The church stands alongside you as a parent to teach your children the truth. Parents, let me help you to recognize how important it is for your kids today to know God's truth. If they are not able to understand and grasp God's truth, then the world is going to fill them full of lies. And those lies are going to lead them down dark paths. And they're going to face many cry, critical and sad times in their lives because they are not following God's truth. I challenge you as parents today to give your children the best possible chance they can have in this world. And that is by teaching them God's love and teaching them God's truth. That way they will have a good direction in which to go in life because that is the right direction for them to go. There's another discipline or value I, a value I want you to teach your children and use with your children, and that is discipline. Discipline is something that we need to grasp, but we need to learn it from God's way of discipline. We need to understand what discipline really is. As uh, I'm out in stores and in restaurants, I watch to see how parents discipline sometimes. Sometimes it breaks my heart to see the pain the children have to go through because they're disciplined so harshly. I hear words that shouldn't even be said, much less to your children. Uh, just so hurtful and so harmful to them. I see children backhanded. Uh, shouldn't be that way. Then in other ways, sometimes I see parents with children and they just let their children do whatever they want to do. I was in a store recently and a child was pulling clothes off the rack, just having fun, pulling them off the rack uh, as they went along with their mom there in the store. And the mom said nothing to them. She just looked at them and kept on doing what she was going to do. And the child was just having a great time, just pulling clothes off the rack. So there's two extremes out there. But there is a right way to discipline, and that is God's way of discipline. Now, I'm going to read a verse to you that some people are totally against today. But this is what the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 24. There's one word in here that throws people off. And that's the word rod, but it's misinterpreted, I think. 
Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. So many times you look at that word rod and you think of a physical hard beam that you would beat your children with. I don't think that's what it means here in Proverbs. What it means here, if you spare the discipline in their lives, a firm hand, a direct path, a way that you are teaching them, if you're not guiding them in a direct way, then you're going to harm the child. You've got to discipline them in the right way. Now, is it wrong to spank a child? I do not believe it is. I think God gave us extra padding back there for a reason. Uh, how many of you were spanked when you were growing up? How many of you, oh my, how many of you were spanked a lot when you were growing up? Yeah. Mom used to say, go get a switch off the bush for me, you know. And there, we had a bush that was the switch bush. And uh, that's what she would use. And I, I, I tell you, though, uh, I knew I was probably going to get another spanking when Daddy got home. And that would be with the belt, usually. But I don't think any of us are harmed today because of it. I think it do, did us good. It got our attention. It kept us in the right direction. Proverbs 29, 17 says, Discipline your children and they will give you peace. How about that? They will bring you the delights you desire. Discipline your children and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. And then Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Discipline is a good thing. Parents, I want you to understand that when you discipline your children, first, as I said, in God's love, because you're teaching them God's love, so you discipline them in love, you are disciplining them the way that God disciplines us. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. God understands for us to walk the path, to go the direction he wants us to go, that sometimes it, it takes discipline. There's one other principle I want to talk to you this morning, one other value that I want you to use with your children, and that's to teach them to live holy lives. Again, if you look at what our children are involved in in our world today, we were talking about it some in our Sunday school class this morning. Uh, just what the world offers them. Used to, you could set your child down to watch a cartoon on TV, and you didn't have to worry about that child. They were okay with that cartoon. Now, you've got to be careful what that cartoon is about because he's teaching them things that they should not even know, they should have no idea about at their age, and it shouldn't even be a part of their lives. It's parents today are having to have talks with children as one of our parents shared in Sunday school this morning at a much younger age about things than what they used to have to talk to kids about. I told my Sunday school class when I was playing with trucks and BB guns until I was 10, 11, and 12 years old and was having a great time with it, you know. Now think about what children are dealing with at 10, 11, and 12 years old. It's a whole different world for them now. So that is why we have to teach our children to live holy lives, to stay away from the things of the world that God does not want them to be a part of. You must guide your children to imitate Christ with their actions, to be like Christ in the world and not like the world with their actions, with their words, and with their thoughts. Look at 1 Peter 1, 14-16. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Now, parents, you have to teach your children to live in a manner that reflects Christ's character. It says in Colossians 2, 6, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord... So walk in him. Now, I know that's a tough job, parent. And listen to me. Parent, remember what I said earlier? You are the example of God's love to your children. 
you are also the example of walking in Christ in front of your kids. You need to watch the way you're living in front of them. Parent, do not... I grew up in a home where my father knew very little English, but a lot of cussing. He knew every curse word on earth, and I think he even made up a few. And that's why I grew up with in my home. And he didn't ask us in a nice way to do anything. He cussed at us to do whatever it is. Even if it was sitting at the table and passing the potato, it was past those blank, 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 blank potatoes, you know. That's what it was. And that's what I grew up hearing. Parents, don't let your children hear that from you. They hear it enough in the world, and they need to know that that's not the way you should live your life. That should not be what they have to hear. And please don't ever use those words to refer to them. You need to reflect Christ to your children. In everything you do, remember, your kids are watching you. There was a po popular country song years ago, and it says, I want to be like you, Daddy. I want to be like you. And the daddy realized that his son was watching him in everything that he did. And it made him understand that he needed to be better in what he was doing. So parents, I challenge you today to teach your children to live holy lives. But to live that holy life, they have to see it in you. You have to walk the walk. You have to talk the talk in front of them if they're going to live a holy life themselves. Now, parents, I know I have challenged you with a lot of stuff today. There's a lot of things that, I w that God would like for you to be doing in your life. But let me encourage you. You're not doing it alone. God is there with you every step of the way. He is giving you the wisdom. He is giving you the strength. He is giving you the knowledge on how to raise your children. How do I know that? Because God gave you children. If God did not think you could do it the right way, I don't think God would have given you children. Why do I believe that? It's because God does not make mistakes. He does not make mistakes. So when God gave you that child, he knew you could raise that child in the right way. So I challenge parents today, if you're not walking that walk already, to do it. These are the four spiritual values, once again. Teach them to love with God's love, not the way the world loves, but the way God loves. Teach them to live by God's truths, not the lies that are in this world. Discipline them God's way, as God disciplines us to keep us in line. Teach them to live holy lives, to be like Christ in their lives, in everything that they do. Whew. That's tough, isn't it? That's a tall order. But parents, I know you can do it. And there's some of you children sitting here today. You can look at your mom and you can say, Mom, you did that for me. That's how you lived your life for me. And I thank you for it. Let me ask you today, how are you doing as a parent? I've got good news for you. It's never too late to start parenting God's way. You will be a parent till the day Christ comes back. I promise you. You will be a parent. My mother's not with me on this earth anymore, but believe me, she is still my mother. And there are still things that happen that I think about what mama would tell me and what she would want me to do. How are you doing as a parent? Are you doing it God's way? If not, I would challenge you today to commit yourself to do it God's way. Maybe there's a parent here today that you do not know Jesus as Savior and Lord. So here's where you start to parent God's way. You start by accepting God's love through His Son, Jesus Christ. Accept what God did for you when He allowed His Son to die on the, Christ, on the cross for your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Then you will have Christ with you in your life, God with you, to help you to parent God's way. 
Now, for all the parents in here, all the moms, even the dads that are already Christians, I know the world is, bi- is a hard place for you today, too. And I know your life is chaotic and busy sometimes, and sometimes you just don't feel like you have the strength or the energy or the time to do what you need to do for your kids. Let me challenge you in this. Lay down some of those other things. Put it aside. Put your children where they should be in your life. Make time. Make priority for your kids. That is an investment that you will make that you will never regret. You will never regret the first minute you invest in a child. That will pay back dividends for the rest of your life for every moment you invest with your children. So parents, I challenge you today, if you haven't already, commit yourself to be the best parent you can be for your children. As I have the invitation today, you might want to come forward and pray and ask God for strength. You might want to come forward and pray for your children. You might want to come forward and accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. But on this Mother's Day, Let's make a commitment to parent God's way. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you today for this opportunity to look at your word and to see how you provide guidance for us in our lives. And part of that guidance, Lord, is how to parent children. Father, I thank you for every parent that is here today. And Lord, I understand the responsibility I grasp the overwhelmingness of the situation today in our world of being a godly parent. And I know sometimes, Lord, these godly parents feel like they're out there by themselves trying to do it the way you would want them to do it. But Father, I would pray that you would give them strength, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them courage to be the parent that you want them to be and the parent that their children needs them to be. Father, thank you for every parent that tries to do their very best the way you would have them to do it. Bless their lives, Lord, and bless this time of invitation as parents make decisions now on what they need to do with their children. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. We're so excited this morning to have the Rogers family come to move their membership here to our church. Uh, the entire family is joining us. Uh, so we're so, would y'all come and stand up here, please? This is Wayne and Tiffany uh, Rogers and their children. I'm going to let Nathan introduce them because most of them are in his youth group. <laughs> yeah, this is Wayne. Hey, bro. <laughs> okay. He's not Tiffany. in your youth group. I, I know, and here's Tiffany. I want to go behind them. And then you have the Papa Bear of the youth, Larry. This is, well, Larry Wayne, LW, Larry. He goes by them all. Um, I'm going to come back to you. And then we have Logan. He's, he's quiet, but he is always there, let me tell you. <laughs> And then you have Addison, the, the mama bear of the youth, um, and this is Addison. And then you have the fun one, the energy, lots and lots of energy. And this is Lane. Yeah, Lane Rogers, yes. Thank you, Nathan. And all of them are coming by moving their letter here, except for Lane. Lane has accepted Christ as Savior and Lord, and he's coming to be baptized. So, uh, isn't that exciting? So I ask you, church family, uh, do I hear a motion that we accept the Rogers family into our church on their letter and then Lane on his baptism? I make all in favor say amen. 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 What a wonderful day today as we invite, as we welcome the Rogers family officially into our church. They've been a part of our church family for several months now. And we're so glad for them to come and make it official today. So I'm going to ask y'all to stay up front and have people come by and welcome you into the church after the service. But I prayed with them and I said, I pray that we'll be the church that they need us to be. And that is my prayer for every family here that Crosswell Baptist is a church.
that your family needs for us to be. Uh, thank you for sharing your families with us. Moms, thank you so much for being with us today. Children, thank you for being with your mom. Uh, Mother's Days are so special. Um, you know, there's a day that's coming for us that you cannot be with your mom on Mother's Day. Uh, but if you still can, treasure that. Treasure that as a gift because it truly is. Uh, I'm going to ask Nathan of Pidwood to come close us in prayer. And then mothers, don't forget to get a rose at that door or that door after the service. Would you pray with me, please? God, thank you, Lord, so much for this family. And God, may, as Pastor Charles said, may we be the church for them. But God, thank you for every family that is here and every mother that is here. God, this world is so crazy, and that's why you challenge us. That's what the whole sermon was about, that you challenge us to be set apart. May we be parents that are set apart from the world. May we not bring in the world into our home, but God, may we lead with Christ as the head of a home. May we do that, and may you give us the strength to do that. In Jesus' name, amen.